So after weeks of waiting, actually my adapter plate and spline have arrived finally. So I've got my straps here and I'm going to just spend this afternoon putting the motor and gearbox back in the car. Um, as I've got nowhere to store them, I don't really have a lot of options. I've kind of just got to get them in the car um, because it's going to rain and all kinds of stuff that it always does and I can't leave them outside. So this little video is just about me getting these back in the car. And I can show you down here. We've got the motor here. So this is the original adapter plate that connects to my gearbox. And what we've done is we've made a secondary adapter plate to adapt the adapter plate to the, to the Nissan Leaf. And that's about 40 mil. Um, and 40 mil should be enough to push the whole motor back away from the far wall in the car and, uh, and give it clearance so that the uh, inverter can sit on top nice and easily. Um, so I'm gonna mount these two together I'm going to bolt them, got the bolts there, bolt them back together again and uh, then use my crane which is there to hoist it back into the car. So if you look under the car I have uh, the structure that holds the gearbox up that goes to the rear axle and uh, it's all waiting there, all been sat there for a number of weeks waiting for me to get it all put back together but theoretically because I'm using the same adapter plate that I used before it's got these two mounting holes on either side, there and there, which go on to my engine mounts that are in the car already. So theoretically, this should just slot in and bolt up. Um, yeah, you know what it's like, nothing is ever that simple, but that's what I'm hoping for. So I'm not gonna bore you all with watching me bolt it all together. I'll just have a go, do a bit, come back, video, and, uh, and see how we get on. So stage one is going well. I've jacked up the gearbox just at the back uh, to give it the same angle that was matching the way the motor was sat. The, the gearbox is a lot lighter than the motor, so just easier to do it that way. I've offered them up and the spline in there has slotted in nicely. And I'm now just putting these bolts in, just line them up, just finger tight at the moment. So all the way around here, I'm just gonna slowly do them up, slowly do them up all the way around, just so that gap is then slowly brought together, making sure all these um, alignments are in their grooves and um, yeah, we should be good. I mean, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, he's done a good job as ever. He's a very, very, very clever man down at the uh, machine shop in Weston. And um, he's done me proud by looks things. So I'm gonna just bolt this up now, make sure it's nice and flush, and then we can uh, look at getting it actually in the car. A few minutes later then, and we're done. So that's nutted up absolutely lovely. Flush all the way around. Everything's aligned nicely and uh, bolts have gone in brilliantly. So that's worked really, really well. So what I'm gonna do, do now is uh, spin this around, hook it up the other way, and I'm gonna try and rig it so I've got two lengths of rope, uh, one at the front, one at the back, so that I can independently adjust them. Um, I kinda need one of those arms you can get. I think I've seen them on some of like, the Sky TV programs when they're doing cars, whereby you've got a rig at the top here and you can adjust it either side to, to make this angle. Um, I don't have that luxury, as ever, doing it on my driveway, don't have all the right tools. Gonna try my best, but I think if I rig it up with two independent ropes, I should be able to just lower and adjust those ropes as I need to, to, um, to make it tilt. That's the plan. So I'm gonna have a go at that now, and uh, I'll come back when I've got it kind of hanging over the bonnet, I reckon, and uh, we'll see where we get to. Well, I haven't videoed all the trials and tra errors, as ever, but I got it this far, so far. So we're in there. I've got the one side of my engine mount and the other engine mount just loosely bolted in, uh, finger tight at the moment. Still got the crane holding it up, the hoist. Um, I'm just having problems under here at the moment with aligning the power plant frame with the bottom of the gearbox. Um, I'm about five, ten mil out. and I, I don't know where, where I've lost ten mil, but I think it's just a little bit of manoeuvring, a little bit of wiggling, and I should get these two to line up those two bolts there underneath where there's actually four uh, on the gearbox there. The back of the gearbox, four bolts slot into the power plant frame. And uh, as I say at the moment, I'm about 10 minutes out. So I think it's just a matter of wiggling because I haven't uh, taken the power plant frame off the back. So I know that's okay. And the engine's on the same engine mount, or sorry, say the gearbox is on the same adapter plate on the same engine mount. So that's in the same place. So it must just be a matter of wiggling. Um, the whole lot's got a little bit of play in it. I'm gonna just play now, see if I can get this to slot in there and uh, thumb tight it up and uh, see how we go with that one. So lots of fitting later, I've got the bolts in. Uh, they're very thumb tight at the moment. Uh, that's being held up on the gearbox just by an axle stand. 
and I've also just put in these cross members that go in there's one there and one there because this one is very important see that hole there you thread a nut through that and or thread a bolt through it should I say and uh, there's a special distance between the top and bottom of the cross member that holds the gearbox up and it's going to be a certain distance or within a certain tolerance otherwise your gearbox is going to be either pointing down or pointing up and of course it's going to put strain on the drive shaft it's all going to be nicely aligned and this is the alignment point so that's why i've only just thumb tightened all this at the moment and why it's on axle stands because i'm going to get a get a bolt and check that my distances are okay it should be pretty close to be honest because i'm only putting it back as it was so fingers crossed that's good um, a bit of a cock up as well, I put it all up together and forgot to put the drive shaft in. <laughs> so, yeah, typical me, I had to take it all apart and uh, I put the drive shaft in. Now again, only thumb tight at the moment, just so I can then play with any tolerances as needed. So I'm going to get that bolt, put it in and uh, see how aligned we are. So back at it today, um, didn't get finished yesterday, my eldest daughter wanted to go for a bike ride so we went out on the bikes in the afternoon to make the best of the, uh, the sun that we had. Uh, it's a trade-off really we're doing this at home and obviously having a family and stuff you can't just do it all as you need to um, so there's the car i'm going to spend a couple of hours today just to finish that off and uh, get that mounted in the in the engine bay and uh, get the crane out of the way so we can get that packed away ready for people to come view the house because uh don't want the house looking like it's a garage when we uh, have people coming around which it currently does so we are in we have a leaf motor in the car suspended beautifully on the same adapter plate that I had originally on its new adapter plate <laughs> attached to my engine mounts uh, very fiddly bit awkward to get in <clears throat> best advice I can give for anybody else doing this is all your bolts all your mounting points just do them up hand type first and uh, obviously manipulate it into position and then when you're happy that you've got it in position tighten those bolts up to the right torque settings um, a little bit, oh crikey, a little bit of advice under the car as well. Um, your power plant frame, it's uh, here, the power plant frame that goes to the rear axle that bolts onto the end of the gearbox. You must make sure that the distance between the, this bracket here and the power plant frame is within 59 to 71 mil from the top of it to the bottom. I get back in focus. Not sure you can see the numbers on the camera there. I'm stretching as ever under my car. Uh, I've got that to about 60 mil, so that's well within the tolerances. Now, when I did this, uh, again, a bit of advice is um, this all settles down. When you take the, the weight off things like the jack I've got here and the, the engine hoist, once you've bolted it all up, it does all just settle down a bit. So just bolt it all slightly higher than your measurement needs. Um, so that when you do take it down, well, when you take all the weight onto the car and onto the power plant frame, it just sags slightly and you don't fall outside your parameters for that distance. Um, now that distance is important because the drive shaft is in and it all needs to be reasonably parallel. It's quite a big gap, I mean it's about, it's about a 20 mil difference you can have top to bottom but it's important you're within there otherwise you're going to get rattling cracking and, and probably break lots of things uh, the way I did this was I had this jack here on uh, this end of the gearbox uh, the drive shaft end and obviously I have my engine hoist on the other end so I could tip it back and forth by adjusting these to get the right elevation at each end as I say I just thumb tightened up all the bolts to begin with till I was happy that it was in position then actually I tightened them all fairly tightly but I had that sag problem I just said so it sagged too low so I undid it all again lifted it all back up did them all super tight to the right torque I think they're about 90 foot pounds uh, of torque for these ones and uh, and then when it all settled back it settled into a really good position right in the middle of the the threshold for the distance and uh, that's the power plant frame gearbox and motor in so if I try and get back out of under the car which is always easier said than done uh, I haven't moaned in this video yet that I don't have a damn garage so here is the other end poking up through um, I can now put all the gear stick and that back in place um, yeah I think I will do that actually there's no reason not to I can't see me taking all this back out again and um, I can get the interior looking a bit tidy put it all back together and uh, that's a major step done obviously the next thing I'm gonna do is put the inverter on top I, I've been a bit silly I could have made this adapter plate a lot longer 
to bring the engine a lot more this way there's a lot of space here and um, I, but my measurements are, should be correct that the, the inverter should fit on here but looking at how tight it is I think I've probably left myself only about five mil space when I've got all this space at the back but I was just a bit nervous when I was measuring it that I just didn't want to interfere with any of this um, but my nervousness has been unfounded really because I've got crikey at least 10 mil uh, sorry 100 mil uh, more space so I could have really brought the engine much further this way but also weight distribution probably not a bad thing to have it a bit further underneath that's very very similar to where the Wankel engine used to sit I'd almost say exactly where the Wankel engine used to be and I'm gonna have a lot of batteries up the front here so um, you know if I can pull the weight more towards the center of the car I don't think that's a bad thing but that's in and that's a, a major step forward to uh, getting the car up and running so that took three, maybe four hours in total. Uh, quite fiddly, you know, I, as I mentioned many times, my driver's on a slope, so as I'm trying to put the engine in, it's continuously falling to the left, and I'm trying to pull it to the right, and slide it in, and not damage the car while it's going in. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that went. I've done a couple of motors now, so each time you just get more confident of how to do it, and, and, and the things you need to do to make sure it goes in correctly. So that's all good, motor's in. <clears throat> Obviously, next thing to get the inverter on top, that shouldn't take me too long. I'll produce a little video about that. Uh, little updates on fabrication. I've been struggling, as I mentioned before, to fabricate the battery unit at the front of the car. Um, mainly it's really tight to get them to fit the way I wanted to fit them, which meant the batteries needed to kind of go in and then slot forward, and it was all really complex and a bit outside my scope of, of ability. But I've realized if I cut a part of the front of the car, um, near where the bonnet catches, it's, it's, not a, it's not a structural part of the car, it's a little thin strip of metal, I can actually move the batteries a little bit further forward, um, which means I can have the batteries in a different orientation, connectors at the top, which means it's a lot easier to connect and wire up. So there's still a bit of design to do there, and the problem with that is, the new design is it needs to be lifted from underneath the car into place. Now, I can't do that, I can't get the car high enough to do that. So that may need to wait until I get my proper lift and uh, get the car up high enough that I can then lift this new battery unit into place. I don't know, I'll see how I get on. It might be that I can fabricate it in place in the car. Oh, I think it's just gonna be easier to bring it up to be fair. Um, slight amendment to the video, just been, just been watching it back. And I mentioned that the power plant frame has a 20 mil tolerance to the distance between it and the one of the, the cross member underneath. It's not 20 mil, it's 12 mil. So it is quite small, but it's enough, you know, it's a, it's a good chunk that you can you can make sure you're within. I'm about three mil inside, so out of the 12 mil, that, that's pretty good. I'm in inside the tolerance, and uh, that means my drive shaft and all that is nicely lined up, and I'm not gonna get any knocking, banging, or crack the power plant frame, or in fact the drive shaft itself. So that's all in, still lots to do, but um, I'll keep you all updated as and when I do. As ever, subscribe and like and comment if you see anything as I'm working on it. Got something wrong, if you think I've talked something up incorrectly or I've missed something, must remind myself to put the oil back in the gearbox because I haven't done that. So I must do that and I'll put the um, gear stick and stuff back on as well, make it all tidy. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next.